Originally, I was working on a Caltrops only run for this week, but after I ran into an issue involving a badly timed save in Kellogg, I realised I would need more time for that one, and would therefore need to get another video out fast. Get it? The mod is by Horsehead Henry, there will be a link to the PC version in the description, and if you're on Xbox, literally just search Sonic, as it was the first result when I did so. As you can guess, the mod turns the player character into the movie version of Sonic, specifically the non-sleep paralysis demon one. This means you are around half the size you normally would be in Fallout 4, so just like the mod author says, I suggest getting the Any Terminal and Any Height mod unless you want to try and play through the entire game without using any terminals. The most important change is of course your increase in speed. The normal jog is faster, and the new sprint is a lot faster. In terms of attacking, I will only be allowed to use my fists. Sort of. You'll see what I mean shortly. That about covers the basics, so with all that out of the way, let's begin. The intro segment plays out as you would expect. Fun fact though, the mouth moves. I don't know why, but that really threw me for a loop. Anyway, when assigning my stats, the most obvious is agility at 10. Not even just because you think agility you think speed, but it will give me more action points to work with, and therefore I can sprint for longer. The leftovers just got tossed into specials that I thought would provide decent perks for the run. Strength is only as high as it is, as the more strength equals more damage for my fists. Also, yes, that is actually his middle name. I am not even kidding, you can look it up. Next up, the bombs drop and it's off to the vault, and as you might expect, I am there in almost no time at all. The rest plays out as normal, only I am in a cryopod twice as fast. As using my fists is valid, beating up the roaches and making my way out of the vault are relatively stress free. For what it's worth, I did end up installing the pit pad mod though. I could still use the pit boy, don't get me wrong, but I figured at least this way it wouldn't be visibly clipping into his giant hands. Running back to Sanctuary and I grab the I'm Special book and use it to bump my luck up to 5 so I'll have access to the idiot savant. I realised I didn't drop any points into intelligence, so I may as well capitalise where I can. I book it over to Concord to help out the Minutemen, and I feel now is as good a time as any to explain how combat is going to work this time around. So, when you start running there is a brief moment where you'll be at normal speed before you start going super fast. It honestly helps the running feel a lot smoother rather than just have you go from 0 to 60 at the slightest tap of the stick. Only when you are moving this fast are your punches also just as fast, as you can see me demonstrating on this pro raider, who gets stun locked by my sheer speed. If I let go of the control stick, I will go back to the game's default speed, and that's no good. So, for a lot of this run, as is in character, I will be running straight into enemies or around them to get enough speed before charging them down with my onslaught. You can also still perform the advanced third person takedowns and moves by the way. I even managed to perform a combo with Preston as I tripped one up right as he fired. You may have also noticed I was able to move while the raider was still being thrown. Turns out, due to the speed I'm moving at, I'm able to get control before the animation finishes, meaning I can potentially combo with myself. Inside the museum, I continue to dispense quick justice on the raiders, three punches is normally enough to take most of them down, and given how I explain things, you would be right to assume my DPS is through the roof, allowing me to clean house in no time at all. I agree to help Preston once I reach him, and out of morbid curiosity, I hop into the power armour. At first it looks bad, then it's okay when it shrinks to my height, I then try to hop out, and now my skin is tethered to it. Not to worry, this is easily fixed with the power of reloading. For what it's worth, if the power armour appeared underneath the Sonic model, I probably would have worn it so that I could take the pain train perk, as I feel like that would have been a very good way to replicate the feeling of the boost feature from the modern games. I am also missing the armour when I have to fight the Deathclaw by the way. Oddly enough, Mutant Hedgehog vs Scientifically Engineered Murder Ram is not a matchup I'm confident in, and it's for good reason. A straight up fight between us seemed next to impossible, so for the longest time I was letting the raiders drain his health while I got in the occasional hit and vats, and then used my superior speed to get away and recharge my action points. Well, after he dealt with the raiders, the plan pretty much remained unchanged, only now I kept him near Preston so that he could do some damage as well. Turns out I didn't need to do any of this, because the next time I attacked him in vats, I sent him into orbit. I'm not sure what causes this, but it seems to happen almost every time I use melee attacks on a deathclaw in vats. Naturally, falling from such a height kills him on impact, so the day is saved, I tell Preston I'll meet him in sanctuary, and then continue to be a good Samaritan as I ruthlessly and efficiently murder Wolfgang in cold blood. Like a hero. Side note, another good thing about this run is that I should never be short on caps. I don't need weapons or armour, and therefore don't need to purchase ammo, plus I can sell most of my junk. 
The only thing I really need is healing supplies, which Fallout 4 has in droves. I also found the one and only weapon I'm going to allow myself to use for this run. You may say this is against the rules, but I have a counterpoint. We upgrade our echidna-infused knuckle duster and get to work slowly bringing the wisdom of the Minuteman to all the raiders in the surrounding area. First up was those at Satellite Station Olivia, so that I may retrieve the locket for the Abernathys. I will say, the added damage and armor penetration of the knuckle duster is quite the improvement over my bare hands. The raiders here didn't stand a chance. A lot of the time I was moving too quick for them to even register where I was before it was too late. I also grabbed the Blitz perk so that I could close the gap between us even faster with Vats, because, you know, I wasn't going fast enough already. This was also where I got the best kill of the entire run whenever I managed to take down and break this man's neck with my psychic powers. I make sure to grab the locket and any expensive supplies, and before I run over to the Abernathys, I get the Corvega Blunt quest from those at Ten Pints Bluff. Honestly, I can't blame this man for pointing a shotgun at me like this. Given the setting, I would also believe I am some horribly irradiated creature. On the way to Corvega, I have my first run in with a super mutant and his dog. The speed I can attack at is one thing, but it's the near endless stagger loop that I can catch enemies in that's going to be the real lifesaver of this run. Needless to say, he dies, and then I continue on that train of thought when I pop in to greet the raiders. I also battered around some ghouls in the basement, and due to me having knuckles by my side, I am now dismembering people almost non stop. Specifically their legs, given the height difference. This is also where I see the illustrious meat spin, don't look that up, and from there proceed upstairs to deal with Jared and the final handful of his friends. I rush back to the settlers, and from there Preston, for my much wanted XP. I actually ran back, by the way. Fast travelling is still allowed in the run, no reason it shouldn't be, but truth be told, I ended up just running to most places myself, as why wouldn't I? I may as well get the most out of this mod while I can. Seeing how people's limbs keep exploding in front of me when talking to Preston, I notice that a lot of blood seems to have stayed on the Sonic model for quite some time at that. It even gets in his eyes, and it kinda reminds me of... Anywho, I return that locket to Blake and his family before making my way over to Sunshine Tidings and clearing it out of ghouls as per usual. And because I was in the area, I made my usual pit stop at the Federal Ration Stockpile to continue Sonic's onslaught against the Raiders for simply existing. I also get lots of free food, which will keep me alive for the foreseeable future. With the outpost rid of all human life, I run south for a bit until I reach Fort Hagen. I can't do much of anything here at the moment, but figured I may as well mark it on the map should I want to just fast travel here later on. My next task for the Minuteman is Overland Station, so it's time to start heading east. I should mention I am currently not planning to side with the Minutemen today, I was actually dead set on the real road as it made the most sense. I know an odd amount of Sonic lore, and I'm pretty sure a few incarnations of him haven't been labelled as a rebel or freedom fighters, so they fit the bill. Plus, being on the side that directly opposes the Institute seemed very fitting. I know you could also go with the Brotherhood, and that is true, but let's just say that siding against them as well was also worthwhile. As I am currently distracting myself with busy work, as truly I was just having way too much fun with the mod to care about what I was doing, I ended up dealing with the whole situation of the water treatment plant for Grey Garden to bring yet another settlement under our control. Fun fact, when you are this quick on your feet, combined with the almost infinite stun locking I mentioned before, you're actually fast enough to stop the suicide mutants from blowing themselves up, as they don't have enough time to finish their explosion animation if you keep punching them out of it. After I am done bullying the super mutants, I head inside the plant to deal with the Mirelurks. Now, normally trying to use melee on Mirelurks ends very badly given their hard shell and oddly good block timing, and while they still manage to do so from time to time, it's not as bad as usual. If for nothing else, all my action points allow me to get a lot of damage in with Vats, which, as far as I can tell, they cannot block. Within no time I restore the plant, bring the robots to our way of thinking, and then clear out Backstreet Apparel for Oberlin Station, as well as Hangman's Alley, because they don't deserve to live. That's pretty much the end of my Minuteman settlement recruiting mission, as now it's time to retake the castle. I'm probably going to avoid talking about most raider encounters from this point on, as they are more of the same. I will say though, this one raider had probably the most accurate reaction to me as I was speeding towards him across the water. Nick Valentine is close enough to my current location, so I decide to go help him out as well, as, after all, it is required to progress the story. Before that, I took myself over to Swan, and was prepared to essentially beat the crap out of him, as it's how every other encounter has gone thus far, however, he put me back in my place immediately as he clobbered the life right out of my quills. 
yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to take him out anytime soon, to be honest. No matter, we can still rescue Nick, so let's do that. There is danger lurking around every turn in the tunnels, given the sheer number of Triggermen that are present down here. Like usual, they can inflict serious damage if they manage to swarm you, but in terms of survivability, they are laughable at best and depressing at worst. Skinny Malone probably could have put up more of a fight, but I activated my <clears throat> super speed to get the jump on him and his men. Well, I say that, but he wouldn't have attacked me first unless I antagonised him, but we shall just ignore that. With Skinny's ring seeping out all over the floor, now was as good a time as any to flee the scene of the crime, specifically in the direction of the castle. I already demonstrated what multiple high powered punches and bunches does to a normal Mirelurk, so let's see how it fares against their queen. Despite the breakneck pace this run has been on so far, the Mirelurk queen required me to slow right back down, otherwise it would destroy me without fail every single time. The best bet to beating her was to just wait for my action points to refill, and then just land as many attacks as possible in vats, and then back off and rinse and repeat. It's very similar to how I initially planned to deal with the Deathclaw. That plan, while effective, didn't always work though, as Vat seems to just have a habit of cancelling itself with this mod, usually right when I'm about to get hit. Not wishing to really rely on that, I then sort of accidentally began to treat it like an actual old school Sonic boss fight. While the Mirelurk Queen stood and covered the ground with its weird poison breath, I just ran around avoiding it as best I could, until there was a noticeable opening, which I would then dash in and start smacking the Queen in the back. Eventually she would turn around or spray more poison, so I would need to back off. Both plans were essentially combined into one whenever her health got low and I was able to secure the victory. I helped Preston set up the castle as a base and just like that we will not be helping them for the rest of the playthrough. Figured it was time to get a move on as speed is the name of the game here, so I sat through Nick's interview and after taking all of Kellogg's stuff, travelled to Fort Hagen to see if the balanced breakfast man could prove any more of a challenge. The synths are about the same as most human enemies, the only major difference being is that they survive when their arms and legs come off, and I guess due to me doing it faster than the game can register, it can lead to moments like this where they are hopping around on one leg before they fall down. I would also like to note if you are seeing me do more damage, it's simply because by this stage I had grabbed all the perks that I wanted for the build, and so every point just got dropped into strength for the next 5 levels to get the most out of my attacks. Anywho, here's Kellogg. I grab his more than likely still surprised brain bits and after witnessing the egg carrier enter the scene, immediately begin to head towards Diamond City. I agree to help Nick at the memory den and because I can't help myself where experience is concerned, I agree to Piper's interview. Ironically, her nickname of Blue still fits quite well here. There is a small situation going on in the city as of right now with a man accusing his own brother of being a synth. He is about to shoot him so we jump in to save the day by employing a trick I can only assume Sonic learnt from Snake during their time together in Smash Brothers. Next up is the memory den, and yep, it's the same as ever. I will admit I find it funny that due to Sonic's height you just straight up can't see him inside the cryopod in Kellogg's memory. With the glowing sea up next, I'm not as bothered about the rads as normal as I will be spending half as long there. But out of curiosity I went to buy a hazmat suit just to see what it would look like and Oh boy, have I created a new demon to stalk your nightmares. That's fine, my max sprinting speed combined with a couple of radex is more than enough to get me through mostly unharmed. I say mostly because that doesn't stop a family of rad scorpions attempting to poke away at my squishy parts. You could say this is karma finally catching up with me because now I am the one being stun locked and unable to move. It was an entirely avoidable situation as well, as there was really no need for me to try and fight them. Thankfully, they eventually stopped, and I was able to begin taking them down one at a time. As soon as I managed to deal with one of them, the rest began to fall in no time at all. After I meet up with Virgil, it leads to a very fun, albeit short sprint through green tech, as I battle the gunners on my way to the courser. The gunners still pack a punch, so I need to be careful to not get surrounded by them. The super speed does make avoiding mines a complete joke though, I must admit. By the time they are ready to go off, I am already out of the blast radius and planting my fist into somebody else's sternum. I would like to say the courser was different, but that would be a lie. Much like Kellogg before him, attempting to delay the inevitable with stim packs and stealth boys isn't all that effective when you can barely manage to land your own counter attack against this blue ball of death. I am supposed to return to Dr. Amari, but that's just a very roundabout way of getting her to tell you about the real road, and seeing how I'm already in the area, I just jog on over to the Old Norse Church straight away, and against my own personal preferences, hand over the chip, let them decode the thing, and then agree to join up with the real road. 
True, the Minutemen are literally ready to help me at the drop of a hat, and I could wrap this whole thing up in about 20 minutes if I wanted to, but again, I felt the railroad was more fitting for the run, so I was off to help Deacon clear out the switchboard. I have proven by now that the Institute's synths are easy enough to stomp, after all, Sonic has a long history of making life a living hell for robots in any shape or form. Deacon hands me the Deliverer, I get Shadow flashbacks, and now it's time to construct the Teleporter, or in other words, the Moment of Truth, seeing how it completely broke in my last Fallout 4 run. Well, lo and behold, this time it actually works, and I can get dropped in without any problems. I get pretty angry at the Robot Boy for a little bit before Father comes in, and things get weird given the bombshell that he drops on me. Of course, I am working undercover for the railroad, so I agree to go along with everything he is saying, and meet up with the other higher-ups down below. You may be annoyed that Father isn't just replaced with Dr. Eggman, but don't worry, we'll get to that. Anyway, I also introduce myself to Layman Z1 while I'm here, to make sure I am technically progressing with the railroad side of things, and not just about to go rogue. Like usual, Father wants me to take out the synth raider leader at Libertalia, but the railroad also need me to grab a password at the Polymer Labs, so I go about the latter objective first. For once in my life, I do not get completely lost while inside the labs. This is because I actually remembered for once that I need to head into this room and into the ceiling via this destroyed part of the wall. I'm not sure why, but I normally completely miss this despite how obvious it is. The ghouls continue to have the defensive capabilities of Play-Doh, so no problems beating them senseless while I grab what I need and zip out to the far eastern side of the map. The raider raining down mini nukes on you can usually be a problem, but yes, once again, my speed makes the process of sidestepping the mini apocalypse a complete joke. The rest of the raiders get to be pummeled like usual, and when we make it to Gabriel, I accidentally prematurely ended the conversation with him, and he spoke like he was going to just attack us before he used the recall code, and while his men certainly sprang into action, to varying degrees of success, Gabriel himself just stood there, clapping. I suppose he really does need to get sent back to the base for repairs. Next is Bunker Hill, and of course, I warn the railroad of the attack, to which they tell me to simply deal with the courser. Again, they make it out to be a big deal, which it clearly is not. The nice thing about taking the course route immediately as opposed to waiting to when he makes contact with the runaways, is that this lets you bypass ever having to set foot inside Bunker Hill, I can instead just climb to the roof of the CIT ruins and get scalded by my weird human hedgehog hybrid elderly child. There are no lasting negative effects to this as I am forgiven immediately, and after becoming intimate with a chair, can join up with Ali to assault mass fusion and get the beryllium agitator. This is my first real encounter with the Brotherhood, and honestly, it's not much different than every other fight thus far. Scribes and soldiers are the same as any other humanoid opponent I have faced up until now, and even those in power armor are simple enough. Sure, my normal light punches don't stagger them like everybody else, but destroying their armor will, as well as the occasional heavy attack. To really make things easier, I took the unarmed perk that gives me a higher chance to disarm opponents with each hit, considering how many hits I land per second, and... well, I'm sure you can figure it out. Now it was time for the elevator ride. Yeah right, I may not have power armor, but as many people know, if you jump off the building from this angle, you can fall straight into Good Neighbor, and due to having to go through a loading zone, you will enter the town without taking any fall damage. From there, I do a 180 and just walk across the street, and in through the front door of Mass Fusion. A crap ton of Radex and super speed allows me to grab the agitator without the risk of any further mutations, and then I had a rather simple time dealing with the sentry bot. I'm not really sure what to say here. Kind of like the Deathclaw at the beginning, whenever I used Vats on him at one point, he just sort of started floating around the room at an odd angle. I mean, it works for me, so I just beat him up while he's in this state, and then outpunch the Assaultrons rather easily to wrap up a short and sweet mission. Time to finish off the last of my undercover work, and I will spare you the details, it's just a lot of talking with different people. That is, until we meet up with Z1 again, who informs us of the Brotherhood's imminent attack on the railroad. We can get to the railroad and save them in the nick of time, ironically, thanks to the Institute's ability to teleport me there in the blink of an eye. Desdemona hands me a gun, I like to think that I spit in her face, and then proceed to continue my punching strategy, as it has been working out just fine for me up until now, and spoiler alert, it will continue to until the foreseeable future. The handful of soldiers and single knight they send in through the back entrance are of no match for me, and go down rather fast. To give credit where it's due, they did manage to inflict a sizable amount of damage on me during the encounter. Unfortunately for them, time is really not all that important, so once they had been dealt with, I took a quick nap to get myself back in top fighting form. We then witness Glory's death, eh, and then get back to Brotherhood slaughtering. I don't want to repeat myself too much, so just know that I broke almost all of their armour, along with 90% of their bones. This also extends to assaulting the police station with Deacon and Tom, only that was a lot more violent, given just how many parts of the enemy decided to explode on us. 
We run into some visual glitches on the Bird of Bird, but thankfully it's nothing that impedes our progress. Sneaking onto the Brotherhood ship wasn't necessarily an option, all things considered, unless we more than likely wanted a repeat of something similar to the radiation suit. To that end, I just sprinted on with the bombs and had them all planted before the Brotherhood really knew what was going on. Well, I say that, but they were all shooting at me the entire time, but that's besides the point. After the final charge was placed, I was on my way to leave when I passed through the area where Maxion usually gives his speech, and... Oh. My. God. Right, well, I couldn't rightly leave now without personally dealing with Maxon, so I took out all of the Brotherhood who came to his aid first. This cost me most of my better healing supplies, mind you, but I think it's important to the run that we deal with Eggman Maxon. When it's down to just the two of us, the battle doesn't last very long, after all, that coat doesn't offer a lot of protection. Still though, not going to pretend like that wasn't the absolute best surprise of the run. I grab his clothes to remember the occasion, and then hop back on the Vertibird to watch the Egg Carrier go down in flames for like the third or fourth time. After that, it's back to the Old North Church, one final time, to begin the last assault. There's no way any of this tops the Eggman surprise, so this goes how you may expect. You punch some robots, you punch some scientists, and you even get to punch some gorillas. But all in all, it's over before long, and the next thing you know, you're creating the second biggest explosion to hit this side of Boston. For what it's worth, I did make sure to fight everybody in the Institute. No half measures, given how strong I am, it just made more sense instead of running past them all to the end. Even though that would of course been more than viable. So we get teleported outside, press the big red button, destroy the Institute, finishing the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout 4 as Sonic the Hedgehog. Many people have probably never asked that question before, I know I sure hadn't thought about it until seeing the mod, but I'm glad I did as it was a surprising amount of fun to mess around with. It was so fun in fact that after the run was over, I went and wiped out all of the raiders in Nuka World, one part to get intro footage for the video, and another because it was just so enjoyable to do with the extra speed. As for the Caltraps run that I was initially working on, I'm sure I'll get back to it at some stage, so look forward to that at some point in the future. Regardless, that's going to be on this channel's video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and you're interested in more channels in the future. Feel free to subscribe, try out one of these videos every week. My name is Nervous, thanks everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.